Hello, I'm Stefan Kreber, I'm project leader for LexD. And in this video, we're going to be looking at a, a LexD cluster feature. This feature is called Cluster Groups. And as the name implies, it allows for grouping a number of cluster members, so machines, within a specific group. That group can then be used uh, for instance targeting mostly, so that you can do uh, you can launch a new instance and say, I want it to run on this group of machines specifically, and then NextD will pick one of the machines uh, within that group. Uh, just a word there on how LexD currently uh, LexD instance scheduling currently works. Uh, LexD currently simply looks amongst the servers that are possible. So in this case, whatever servers are in that group, which run as the fewest instance at the moment, and it will just create a new instance there. Uh, we've got work in progress that uh, might start showing up around LexD 5.10 or in LexD 5.11 most likely, uh, which will be adding support for more, uh, more, well, more flexibility around scheduling, making it possible for an administrator to kind of override the way LexD does placement and replace that with whatever logic makes sense. Uh, so this will effectively change that rule of just pick whichever has the fewest instance and potentially allow administrators to use a different strategy. Now, those, um, like in this case, we've got the documentation open here for the cluster groups. You can see that in this example, it creates, uh, we create one for a GP, for a group called GPU, and then place in this case one server, but usually you'd put more than one within the group, uh, indicating that this group uh, that this server has GPU support. The user can then do launch and do dash dash target at GPU and next day will go and pick whichever server has the fewest instance within that group and create the instance there. Uh, there's slightly more logic to that. Uh, Lexty also does check the architecture uh, that's needed for the image you're using. So if you've got both Intel and ARM and the image is Intel, uh, it will pick an Intel server even if um, like the least busy server within the group would be an ARM server. The other thing that's mentioned there is uh, there is a setting called scheduler.instance, which can be set on individual cluster members, so servers within a, within a cluster. And what that setting lets you do is uh, it has three different values. It defaults to all, which means the server can be used uh, both for just normal placement, so if you don't specify a target, uh, or it can be used when the user specifically targets the machine, or it can be used when the user targets a group that the server is part of. This can be changed, and so if you change the value uh, of scheduler instance to manual, then the server can only be will only be selected by LexD if the user does that does dash dash target and server name or the setting can be set to group, in which case LexD will not uh, be automatically place anything on that server, but any user that uses dash dash target, and then a group that the server is part of can still make use of that server. Uh, that's again, particularly useful for something like GPUs. Uh, what you would probably do is create the GPU group, place your servers in there, and if those servers are really mostly meant to be used for GPU workloads, then go and set the scheduler.instance config key on those servers to be uh, to be group. And that means that a user that just launches an instance on the system, but does not pass dash dash target and the name of the server or dash dash target and add GPU to say that it wants to GPU group, will not get their instance landing on that particular machine. That way you don't you don't end up you know wasting resources effectively. All right, so that's kind of the theory around all of that. Uh, let's go look at how that works in practice. So here I've got a small cluster I just created locally on, on my machine. Uh, this used the microcloud um, project that I showed recently to just very quickly create a cluster with Ceph and everything in place. So I'm just gonna go inside of one of those machines here, cluster zero one. Uh, and if we look macro cloud uh, list thing, uh, cluster macro cloud cluster list. Okay, we can see we've got five machines. That's all set up. Uh, we can go check the storage side of things, which should show us the exact same thing. So Microsoft is good. And if we look at let's see, 
cluster list. Same deal with LexD. We've got uh, the five machines and everything is clustered. Okay, so that's fine. Now, if we go and we launch some instances, I'm going to be using Alpine here just because it's the smallest image we have, I think, and it's a bit faster for demo. So just downloading that image and packing it uh, onto Ceph and then creating an instance. This will land in the first server on the cluster, which is probably cluster 01. There we go. The second instance will most likely land on 02, etc. It effectively lands in the order that the machines were added to the cluster. Oh, uh, never mind, that's got 05. Uh, MicroCloud effectively joins servers in like concurrently now, um, which means that it's not guaranteed to be in alphabetical order anymore. But anyway, if we launch five instances, we should find ourselves with one instance per server, which is what we'd expect for normal LexD placement. There we go, one, two, three, four, five. And then if we start a sixth, it's gonna go back to the beginning, so it's gonna end up on cluster zero one. There we go. Now, again, if we look here, we've got just those servers. If we go look at cluster 01, we can see that it's in the default group here. Uh, there are no other groups that are defined. Um, just to show how placement works, we could technically do the somewhat pointless A7 target at default. And this will deploy against the default group, but because all the servers are in it, it's kind of pointless. Uh, and that should land on cluster 05, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Uh, so now cluster group. And we've got the command to manage the all of cluster groups here. So if we list them, we just see default. We can create a new one. Uh, let's call it foo. Okay. So now we've got a new group called foo. Uh, this should not really work because there's nothing in it. So this should just cause an, a, a failure to target. There we go, no suitable cluster member found. Now, if we go and assign, so the assign command takes the member and the group. So let's do cluster 01 goes to group foo and we can do cluster 02 as well in group foo, okay. Now, of cluster 01 and cluster 02, the least busy is cluster 02. So I would expect this to hit cluster 02. If we go look, A8 is in cluster 02. Now, if we do A9, if we didn't do a cluster group, this would definitely not go on cluster 01, because cluster 01 is already running two instances. But in this case, it probably will. Uh, it could still do cluster 0 02 technically, but yeah, it went to cluster 0 01. And again, if we then do A10, that's gonna end up on cluster 0 02. Here we go. So, um, that was just the finding one group and then targeting that. Now, to just show the other option I was, uh, I was mentioning earlier, if we go on cluster and do set and do I don't know, cluster 0, 03, um, and we use that um, that config key I mentioned, which is the scheduler.instance. Scheduler.instance or instances, I don't actually recall instance, okay. Uh, and we do group. Okay. So now let's look at the list here and let's actually filter for anything that wasn't cluster 03. Okay. And we're gonna clear it. Come on. There we go. Okay, so now there's nothing left on cluster 03. Normally, uh, let's try to just replace that instance A3. Normally, if we weren't specifying a target, this should go straight to cluster 03 because that machine is running nothing when all the others are running a bunch of instances. But you'll notice it didn't, um, and instead it landed on cluster 04. So that's the setting, which means that it will only be targetable if you target a group it's a part of. 
in this case, no group was was selected, so it didn't land on there. Um, one hook around the, on this one, actually, if we do uh, target at default, because as we've seen, they're all part of the default group. This should actually land on cluster 03, given that within that group, uh, cluster 03 is the least busy. And indeed, it got it. So that kind of shows how, how that logic works. Um, and there's actually, we're going to even show the other option. Uh, so let's say we delete 11. Um, just going to show the other value for that machine, the uh, scheduler instance option that we have. Come on. There we go. Okay, uh, so if we once again configure cluster 03, and this time we do manual, and we launch A11 target default again, this instance should not land on cluster 03. Indeed, there's nothing on cluster 03 right now, and instance landed on cluster 05. That's because with that setting, regardless of any group it might be in, uh, it will only ever take in instances that directly target added. So at that point, if you do want to go in cluster 03, you need to actually target cluster 03. And that way, it will actually take in that instance. All right. Uh, so that's kind of another view of, of how the cluster groups work. Uh, as mentioned, there's a default group, all the servers are in it. There are additional groups you can define. You can configure the servers to allow um, either just any instance placement on them or only if placing against a group that they're a part, on, uh, part in or even just only for direct targeting as, as was done here. Uh, this makes it pretty easy when you've got somewhat different servers that you're working with uh, because you can now pretty easily like group things, also making sure that machines that are more valuable just don't get automated placement on them, uh, and then making effectively making the user have to do dash dash target at some group name to get an instance on there. I also mentioned that projects can interact with that, so let's see if we can just get that going real quick. So I'm gonna create a new project. It's called that demo and. I'm uh, going to make my life slightly easier by not having to configure profiles or images, I guess. We will just use the project only for, only for instances. So if we switch to demo, okay. So let's just create a new instance now in here. And so let's say we do the, the, group, the default group and we create a new instance called A20 inside of that project on default group. This works just fine. Um, but now let's reconfigure the project a tiny bit, which I think is going to make my life slightly harder because of the profile thing I just did. But anyway, um, so let's do restricted true. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. That was gonna come to bite me. So we actually need to delete that. And then I can change some of the settings on there. Fine. So uh, features profiles true. Uh, might as well do the images as well. Okay. What I'm gonna do is clone the default profile from the default project into the default profile here in my current project. There we go. And as part as as part of setting restrictions in place, you also need to do a few more things in config, which is setting the actual number of CPU that you want. So limit CPU one limits memory one gig and we'll put a disk size of uh, 10 gig okay. and now uh, that's some basic limits are in place let's make the project restricted project set demo in there 
Oops, restricted. There we go. So now that project is um, completely restricted and restricted.cluster.target true. So we'll allow for, uh, for targeting. And then you can actually limit what groups can be used. So in this case, I can do only foo is allowed. All right. So let's look at the config that we ended up with here. So if you look at the project config for demo, that looks like this. So the project itself has uh, storage images profiles enabled as far as features. It is a restricted project and it allows for targeting, but only to the foo group. And then we have a config for default profile, which just sets the memory, CPU, and disk. Now, if we do launch, and we try to use the default group, this fails. Um, despite the group perfectly existing and everything is just not allowed, but the user can target foo, and this will work properly, uh, getting us either cluster 01 or cluster 02. There we go. Uh, so this also, that particular integration with cluster groups makes it possible to create different projects and then restrict those projects to specific groups um, so that if you if you have, well, it can go either way. You could have a project that does heavy use of uh, GPUs or needs some specifically beefy, beefy machines you'd not no normally want to use. You can put those systems inside of a group and then you can restrict that project to that group so that its instances automatically go on those beefier systems. But it can also go the other way around where you might have a number of uh, machines that are quite costly to you and that are really meant to be used for very specific use cases. And you can just simply not give access to those groups to a specific, to your like least important projects so that those get scheduled on, on more common machine types effectively. And that's it for cluster groups in, in LexD. Um, not sure like how many people really know about this feature or have really used it. It is quite useful when you've got um, like a more heterogeneous uh, type cluster. Like if you're looking at what I have here, where like all five of my machines in the cluster are completely identical, this doesn't necessarily make all that much sense. But once you start playing with like different type of CPU, different type of amounts of RAM, different amount of RAMs, uh, different type of GPUs, FPGA, or the accelerators in the system, it really makes it quite a bit um, easier to to just separate things and then as you launch instances target exactly what you want and the integration with projects makes it possible like in a in a larger shared environment to to restrict those more expensive uh, systems to the projects that actually have a use for that anyway i hope this was useful if you've got any questions about it feel free to leave them below or in our community forum the documentation, um, our clustering documentation was refreshed somewhat recently uh, and covers this and many other topics. So I would uh, recommend that you go and take a read. If you want to quickly test that for yourself, uh, you might want to look at our microcloud video, which shows how to very easily set up a cluster, including Ceph and all of those uh, bells and whistles very, very easily. That's one of our more recent videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.